Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll. Welcome to another episode of In The Mix. We're gonna continue our discussion on mixing Diamond Dixies Without Your Love today. We're gonna talk about drums, we're gonna talk about bass, we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna bring in some hardware like WA-76s, maybe even some stomp boxes. Baby, you told me to love it. All right, so I'm still in the mix room. We're about a half an hour, 40 minutes into this thing. We've got the drum sounding pretty good. Uh, got some samples layered in. Um, I went ahead since uh, just a couple episodes, I walked through mixing sampled drums, you know, loops and stuff like that. I've got, um, I've got some of that kind of thing going here and I've already added those in. So those are kind of carrying our intro and first verse playing subtly under verse two. That kind of a thing. So I've got all those drums being grouped together, if you'll recall, to one bus that has the WA-273 on it. Uh, those drums, um, those raw sounds, you remember how good they were. Every single preamplifier was warm audio. A WA-73 on the kick and the snares, a lot of WA-412s, some Tone Beasts were in there, um, WA-76 compressors on the snare top and bottom, WA-2A um, compressor on the kick drum, you know, um, WA-47 Juniors on the Tom Toms, WA-84s on the over, you get the idea, right? We, it's, um, um, their gear sounds amazing and I use a ton of it. So we're to the point now where I'm gonna drop in the bass, okay? The bass guitar is, uh, that's my friend Duncan Mullins, bringing it, uh, he, play, he played great, he always does. He's one of my best friends in this town. Um, he, he tracked uh, through, uh, we went direct through the WA-73 preamplifier into the WA-2A um, compressor. Now it was ranging from about three to six dB of compression. I'm not shy to use you know, uh, several dB of compression on that unit because it, it just sounds amazing. So listen to the raw sound, okay? Big, full, rich, fat, uh, dynamically controlled, uh, you know, for the most part, just everything you would want to start with in a mix. So let's, but let's bring that up underneath the drums that we've got going so far and see where it's laying. Okay, it sounds amazing, but you know, we, we do need a little EQ work and, and a little, uh, just a little tightening of the tone, which is something that um, compression will really give us. Uh, as well as this step right here, a, a tape saturation. I'm definitely gonna use tape saturation on this guy. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's just use this setting right here and see, see what we got. Okay, you, you hear the tone tightening up as well as you hear dynamic control a little bit. You see the difference on the input and the output here. Um, that it, it's rounding, you know, the, 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 the saturation is rounding some of the transients of the bass guitar just a little bit. I've got this guy in my template and I use him a lot. Um, but I want something a little different. Um, I think based on where I want this guy to sit, I'm going to use the WA-76 compressor. Um, it's down here in the rack. Let me dial that in real quick. So I'm just gonna dial this in, get the compression level I want. Check the uh, output here. Let's get, make sure we're up in the red, just a little bit. Yeah, because the output transformer on these things sound great. Down in the attack where we want it. Fast, fastest release, four to one ratio. Let's let's see how that sounds in the track. Okay, so let's take this guy out of solo and hear him with the drum kit and do a little e uh, EQ.
Okay, you'll notice uh, equalization wise, before I added anything, I, I removed some low, uh, you know, some, some place where it's just kind of puffy and full. Um, right around, looks like probably around 100 and, look at that, 176 cycles, a few do, dB there. Um, it's just, just a little, just a little full. I, I, I would rather have a big tone to start with and carve away a little bit, um, which is what we did here. Um, and then I added just a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, articulation. It's best, it, you was notice on the, when I was cutting on the bass guitar, you see my cue is real broad. I recommend not using a, a, a high cue number, you know, like three, five, seven, whatever, um, on bass guitar, because you, what you find yourself doing is starting, instead of removing a, a, a cloudy range of low end or something like that, you start removing specific notes. So, um, you know, all of a sudden when the bass player strikes that particular note, the volume dips down. So I'm not trying to create that. I'm just trying to get more of a broad stroke dip through there if there's any, you know, muddy uh, elements um, within the guitar itself, okay? So that's my uh, technique on bass. Uh, let's see how that's fitting so right now. Pretty good. Um, I, I may need a little more compression, but I think I, I want the sound, you know, I have a parallel comp compression track that I can uh, copy the bass guitar over and get, you know, really heavy handed. But before I do that, I'm gonna try to reamp it through a pedal um, and see if I get, uh, I'm gonna add some hair on it. Because of that, the transients are gonna, um, the tone is gonna tighten up by nature anyway. So I've got this little system over here and I have uh, four different flavors of overdrive. Uh, this is kind of a new thing for me, but one that on bass guitar I've been really uh, fond of recently is, is the, uh, the, the green one here, the Nobles. And I really love this MXR submachine too. I'm gonna try this one first because I want just a bit of hair. I'm not looking for low uh, sub frequencies or anything like that. hear what that's adding. I'm going to add way too much so you can really hear uh, hear what, what's happening. Obviously that's a little carried away, bringing up some noise floor, but let's turn that down and get just the right amount of fuzz on him. The uh, spectrum knob, just think of it as a tone knob, kind of just rem taking the frequency uh, down just a little bit. I like that. I'm gonna start there. I think that uh, that really added, not only did it add the, the, um, the hair that I was looking for, you know, the distortion, um, which is going to give it, you know, some, some drive and aggression, but it also, uh, if you notice, it, it, it did some leveling of the, the, uh, the tone and the, and the dynamic as well. All right, I will point out that to get the reamped signal back into Pro Tools, I'm going through the Tone Beast here, and the reason is it's a, it's a, um, it's a very capable of producing a lot of color. So in addition to my pedals, I can control the saturation effects even more um, with preamp uh, distortion, you know, by changing the transformers and stuff like that. So that's kind of set up in my chain all the time to get back into Pro Tools, go reamping rig through the Tone Beast. So let's start there. We've got the drums and the bass and all the loop guys are coming over here. And um, like I talked about, I, I'm passing everything through the transformers of the WA-73s. Uh, and lastly, I'm gonna tie those together I've got a uh, Acoustica Audio um, uh, Pink uh, plug-in here. It's um, uh, it, you know a, a creation of a popular bus compressor that's really common for drums because it's really impactful and punchy, which is the sound I'm looking for here. You notice after I put the compression on, I, I felt like the, 
the EQ of the bass guitar needed changed just a little bit, but that, that setting uh, is working great for me. Uh, I'll pull that up again so you can kind of steal some of my, some of my um, settings here. Uh, attack of 10. Uh, I, I do have um, the, you know, the low uh, high pass on. Uh, the low high pass, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? Uh, release, you'll see where everything's at here. Three to one ratio, and um, that's what that's doing. Now, we are hearing the effects of my stereo bus as well, to a point. I've got the, black. so far, I've got the uh, Plugin Alliance Brainworks Black Box uh, for, I, I love what this plugin does. It's, it's just fantastic, um, you know, emulating tubes and transformers and whatnot, and, and it, it I mix through it the whole time. It is on from the beginning. If, if I take it off, it doesn't even sound like my mix anymore, you know, once you, once you get started into it, okay? And then secondly, I've got my analog stereo bus going here. I have a, down here in my rack, I have a hand-built um, SSL bus compressor. Um, and, but it is in bypass right now. It is, it's, I have the threshold down, so you're not hearing the effects of any compression. So I'm gonna dial that in right now, okay? Okay, you'll see that what I dialed in was basically a two to one ratio. I'm not looking for heavy compression at all. Just a little bit of glue and just a little bit of dynamic. Uh, I'm using the uh, fastest um, release setting. I tried auto, um, but I felt like it was a little punchier when I went back to the fastest release. And as well, uh, my attack is set to 10 milliseconds. I may try later switching it to 30, which is the slowest, but I, right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with 10. Okay, next in my chain, for uh, the analog uh, stereo bus uh, following the, the bus compressor is the uh, Warm Audio EQPWAs uh, based on the classic tube compressor that's you know been a long favorite of mine on stereo bus. So that guy is in right now, in line, so I'm hearing the effects of the tubes. However, the EQ itself is not on. So I'm not gonna turn it on yet. Uh, I've got this, this setting that is just kind of my thing that I, and I vary it just a, a couple dB one way or the other, um, but I don't actually like to hear it yet. Um, I, I like to hear the tubes. I need to know what they're doing, but the frequency change that I'm gonna, gonna make is very subtle and I like to kind of hear it a little bit later in the game. That's just kind of my system. All right, I think that's a, that's a, that's a great spot for me to, to um, to stop for today. We've covered a lot, a lot of territory, I think. Next week, we are going to get into guitars, keyboards, and parallel compression. All right, guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't already, remember to follow Warm Audio on all their social media pages. And maybe take a minute to give them a big shout out for all this great educational content that they're providing. Also, follow me on my own pages at In The Mix with Joe Carroll. Now here is Diamond Dixie singing Without Your Love. you think that I'm crying over you And still hung up on every word you'd say Cause boy you sweet talk to try to get your way But those stupid games don't work on me anyway Baby you told me to love it Something I can't live without Well honey
Fuck it.